Hello again and welcome to Crime and Music. I'm your host, Brian J. Kinsley, and with me as always, my friend, Ben Rubel. Do we got a box now? Uh, hands up. <laughs> hands up, <laughs> chin down, let them fly. I have been getting a little bit of the, uh, like some boxing come across like my feet on Facebook, the Ooh. old Mike Tyson videos. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but I, I can't, maybe because I keep watching them. You're saying stuff, I guess. Yeah. If, if you like the aggression and the violence and the murder and the crime, you're in the right place because this is Crime and Music. We talk about musicians and their misadventures into law-breaking. Every other Wednesday, Ben and I put up our dukes and tackle facts and fictions and, well, no fictions. We sort those out. Well, we sometimes say things that aren't right. <laughs> Allegedly <laughs> is a popular word. If you like that sort of thing, share with a friend. Tell somebody in Wyoming or no, no, Vermont. We're done. No, no, we're done. No, 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 we're, no. no. Okay, Wyoming no. does not exist. We're taking it off the map. Yep, right no. there. Just plucked it. From they don't want to play with. They don't want to be our friends. <laughs> I don't want to be their friends. <laughs> Take my ball and go home. But seriously, if somebody comes in from Wyoming next week, we'll be like, "Woo, got one!" For- oh, dude. Hey, we got one from. Um, Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah. All right. Nebraska exists. You guys are on the map. I I, I apologize. And I there are new best hat. friends. You guys are great. New best friends. Corn. All right. Corn. Corn holio. Are you ready for this week, my man? I don't know, man. Okay. So, yes, I'm ex- I'm excited. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I was driving in here today, and I was remembering our last session. We did some podcast. Yes. We weren't. Fe- I wasn't feeling good. I was you were dying. I'm and, dying. And now it sounds like you're feeling. We're. And we're good. I hope it, I hope it shows. I hope it comes through in in our in our excitement, in our you know up up tone lifting and. There's energy here. Uh, we're talking fast. Yeah. Hey, at least we're having a seven up. Definitely back on the seven up pop train. Right. 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 Okay. So um. Not a sponsor. And I, I we got guest the guest coming up. Oh, we always have guest the guest, my man. Okay, I want try. Can, oh, what do you want? I want you to give me a hint or two, but I want to be able to ask questions. Oh, interesting right. twist. Yeah. Well, questions? it's all new. Today, today's a new day. It's a the new day. first day of the rest of our life. It's a new dawn. And I would like it's to put put a quick thing out there just to tell everybody. This is a little embarrassing, I think. Is it acceptable for a grown ass man <laughs> to tuck in his t shirt into his jeans? Oh my goodness! I'm doing it now. I'm, I'm I've never done it my whole entire life. Sometimes if I do tuck a t shirt into my jeans, I'll put a second t shirt on so it can be untucked because <laughs> so, I don't want. Oh, that's not the way I want to present myself in this world. <laughs> sometimes I'm tucked, sometimes I'm untucked. Brian, seriously, I tucked this in today. It's a t- kind of a tight shirt. When I bought it, it wasn't tight. You're looking buff. You're looking like yeah, I'm you're looking s- buff. Swell but... into it. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of crunches. That's why my gut's so big. 12-ounce curl. No, but I'm a, I'm a t-shirt tucker inner. Two, three, even in the summer? I will. Um, it's I, still cold. Well, not, not in shorts, just in jeans. Okay. Just in jeans. So far, jeans. that's where we're at. <laughs> yeah, I we'll mean, see. that's pretty dad of you. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a T-shirt tucked into my awesome cargo <laughs> shorts will look all that great. I can't wait for summer to see you. This will be great. I just can't wait for summer. Oh. All right. What do we got? Well, as usual, guess the guest. All right. Guess you the guest. Definitely ask questions this time around. It'd probably be helpful. This one. I'm feeling good. I'm this feeling one's a little good. different. It's a little bit recent. If you've been paying attention to uh, some of our social media, you'll mm. know kind of the target market we've been going after lately. No, I haven't. I haven't really paid a lot of attention to our um, our MySpace page lately. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, uh, first hint is Jake the Peg. Jake, what was that beep? Yeah, don't worry about that. It's gonna oh. happen again. But, um, Jake the Peg. Jake the Peg. What is that part of the? No. All right, Jake the Peg. I don't. Jake the Peg. No. 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 Fellow inmates uh, will call him Willy Wonka. So candy, candy. Willy Wonka was a candy guy. All right, fellow inmates will call him Willy Wonka. So he was in. He was in the jail. Yep. It's a uh, a dude. It's a dude. It's a dude. It's a dude. All right. All right. This is a big one. He's the inventor of the wobble board. Of the wobble board. Of the wobble board. All right. I, that might not help me as much as you think because I'm not sure what a wobble board is. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> there's, um, a, there's a demo coming up later. All right. So I I, I, I got to ask is. Sure. I get two questions. Is he uh, just yes, no questions? Okay. Is this person still alive? Yes. Is this person still making music? No. Can I get seven more questions? <laughs> Jake, um, Jake, 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 Jake Jarmel. Uh, yeah, Jake the Jake Snake the Roberts. Peg. Jake P- 
peg. Jake, or, all Jake, right. Jake the peg. All right. Uh, no. Well, I'm not feeling so good You got good eight about seconds. <sighs> I'll just drink he, with my eight he, seconds. He's from I, Australia. Oh, the an NXS guy? No. Oh. His name is Rolf Harris. Again, can we just start with the <laughs> fucking names? I didn't even just want to give you Rolf Harris. Uh, <laughs> ben, do you know who Rolf Harris is? No. no. You lose. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this one was actually sent to us by uh, the good people at Australian Music on Twitter, uh, at Aussie Music Loud. Oh. And so I was I was chatting with those guys and asking if we could. We were just recently in, and thank you to everybody who helped us out, the Rode Microphone Podcast Competition in Australia. Did we win? We did not. <laughs> But we tried our best, and, uh, and you know, best wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough. Right, so we put gonna, it out there. We're gonna improve and go. I, when I entered the competition, I literally didn't know it was in Australia, and so they were great though. I, I kept telling them, "I have until Tuesday," and they're like, "Tuesday's come and gone, man." And I'm like, "No, I'm. It's 11:58. Like, not in Australia. <laughs> Touche, uh, sir." Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. uh, so anyway, mountain time. So uh, it was fun. Somebody at, gave us kind of a little request yeah. here. Yeah, well, happy to do that sort of stuff. Every time. All right. March 30th, 1930, born Rolf Harris. Rolf. Rolf. Uh, his parents are Agnes Margaret Robbins and Cromwell Crom Harris. Crom? Crom very well. Crom very well. Uh, uh, do you know a guy named Crom? <laughs> I, I, know a, I know a guy with the last name Cromwell. Oh, all right. Well, okay. This What's guy's this guy's first name? Cromwell. Well, I mean, the or, no, the first name of the guy. Oh, no, Rolf. No, Rolf. Oh. Rolf. Yeah, right, we're going to call him Rolf. All right, Rolf. Anyway, Agnes and Crom raising up little Rolf there in Bazendine, Perth, Western Australia. Western Australia. I've never been to Western Australia. No, I figured you'd like this because I'll let everybody know when Ben and I had our, uh, we lived together in college doing stuff. Ben went to Australia as part of his job to teach the Australians things about drilling holes and stuff like that. Yeah, well, it was nice. I really liked it. And, you know, the neat thing about Australia, even though they have a, you know, the Australian accent. They're very in sync with a lot of our, I don't want to say American values, but our American way of, of life, our thoughts, our sort of like... Lifestyle. Yeah, um, act and ask questions later. You know, rather, they're, 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 they're balls to the wall people. They don't like to, they're not, I don't know, I, I don't want to come across as some angry American here, but they're... I, they like Americans, and Americans like Australians. That's, so when you're that's out, what I've heard. When from, you're out and about you. in Australia, yeah, they're very, <laughs> oh, you're an American. They're cool. Unlike if you go to some countries where they're like, damn Americans, which I get that too. God don't don't get me Americans. wrong. But the Australians are kindred spirits with uh, the Americans. I like it. All right. It, uh, it's the, probably that children of England thing, you know. But, but, but it, yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah, I mean, we, we had adventurers come over here when they settled this continent, and mm-hmm. they had... Mm-hmm. Adventures go down there when they settled that continent. So they weren't the people; they were risk taker, risk, uh, risk takers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good people. I like them. I know one Australian dude lives up in Traverse City. He's a pilot. Rumor has it, if you have two Australians, you got a party. A party? Well, a party, but you know, party. Don't they use some pretty vulgar language by our standards? Don't they use the word cunt a lot? He's a good cunt. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the British, though. You know, it means something completely different. Yeah. Oh, we'll get to racial slurs, too, and all that stuff. I can't wait. We'll get there. Let me tell you about Bassendine. Uh, it's northeastern suburb, about seven miles northeast of Perth. It's on the west side. Okay. Uh, it covers an area of about four square miles and has a population of around 15,000 people as of the 2016 census. And that's Bazendine? Bazendine. Okay. So it started as a British colony, like we're talking about. It was established in 1829 along the Swan River. Not the Swanee River. Just the Swan River. Uh, there's a rumor in London, see, that the French were going to start building penal colonies over that way. On uh, part of, like, near Western Australia where they were at. So. Stop turning out me, Swan. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get that out. That's a good one. All right. They started, uh. The colonizers started a, a free colony on the river there. They actually put a thing back to England. They're like, hey, man, the, the French are coming over, and uh, they're going to build prison colonies here. But what I'll do is I'll just run this colony like a free colony, and uh, we'll stop paying you guys taxes, but we're not going to start a prison. And England was like, we don't want the French to have it, so they're just co- They're cock-blocking. <laughs> they, they say, yeah, they cock block. <laughs> oh, you want to put a prison here? We're going to let... We're going to let freeloaders live here. Just the industry of Bazendine, uh, one of the longest established businesses in the area. 
Uh, it started by a guy named Lucio Pasquale, and it's handed down to his family through the generations. Can you guess what type of business it is? Like, what would the oldest business in Bazandine be? Wine. I, well, that I guy sounded know. French. I'm going with wine. Lucio Pasquale. Uh, it's on Old Perth Road. The old uh, the whorehouse? Uh, Lou's Hair Design, established in 1982, now run by Lou's son, David. Oh. That's the longest established business in the area. You set me up to fail on these. All the, <laughs> you want to take a guess? You want to take a guess? <laughs> Matt, Matt called. I talked to him today. He's like, you'll never guess who I saw at the lumberyard this morning. <laughs> yes, like, I, do you want me to guess? I, yeah, guess. So I guessed. <laughs> like, no. No. And, and then he's like, oh, yeah, the guy that owns Founders Brewery. Like, Matt, how would I know? I, I, I still don't know his name. <laughs> Notable people from Bazendine. There's a bunch of politicians. Uh, and Rolf Harris, as we'll get to. And Adam Kay from Perth's own indie rock band, Turnstile. Oh, yeah. We're all, ro- no. <laughs> you know, podcast for Australia. <laughs> yeah, right? well, yeah. We're learning. We're learning. All right. Let me talk about Rolf and his childhood. I'll, I'll give you that. Rolf is actually named after a famous Australian author, Thomas Brown. Okay, that sounds Australian. All right. It's, what? I'm just pausing here because my note says pause and wait. I just told you that Rolf Harris was named after famous Australian author Thomas Brown. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was named after Diana Ross. <laughs> yeah, no, no follow-up there? All right. Yeah, he wrote books under the pseudonym Rolf Boulderwood. Oh, okay. And so his mom, Rolf's mom, uh, was a big fan of that, Margaret. And uh, this guy, Boulderwood, uh, wrote a notable novel about Bush ranging uh, in 1882 called Robbery Under Arms. That just seemed like something you actually would be interested in. Bush ranging? Yeah, like going yeah, out in the bush in the I'm... old 1800s, man. <clears throat> I mean, I think they did a lot of bush ranging in the 80s around here. You were... now it's all the bush has all been cut down. <laughs> it's more much. free ranging. I see. You were into mountain men and all that stuff I, back I'm in the big, day. It's, well, I just figure bush ranging is the same thing. We're no, getting a weird tangent if you guys aren't. No homo, dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been big time into mountain men. I don't think men. you have to say yeah. that. My that. favorite movie, <laughs> Brokeback Mountain? Heck yeah. I can't quit you. <laughs> I can't quit you. Ralph's got a typical upbringing in the outback, lots of time outside, but uh, he liked painting too. Um, his, his grandfather was like a painter of some note back in the day, so he liked painting. Um, they had a river behind their house, so Rolf swam just about every day. In 1946, age 15, Rolf is the national um, backstroke junior champion at 100 meters throughout all Australia. All right, wow. Well, Dude yeah, can swim. Swimmers. That's the thing to Greg do. Greg Luganis action. That's... Hey, what's that swimmer guy from here? Uh, Michael Phelps. Ma- Michael Phelps. Phelps. I think yeah. I like that. I think I like a good, good guy. Yeah, he seems like a all yeah. right dude. Yeah. Now he's doing like commercials for depression and anxiety, but probably stressful. Yeah. Well, swimming it's hard being pools. him. 1947. Rolf, uh, his self-portrait in oils was selected to be hung in the art gallery of South Wales, which is very prestigious. I imagine. 1949. His oil color landscape on a May morning, Guilford, won a Claude. Hutchin Prize. Also prestigious. That's what it reads. Uh, he held four ex- exhibitions for his paintings. So uh, basically, the guy can paint, you know, and he's in high school. He can paint really well. He's a painter. He's an athlete. Yeah. He's, he's a renaissance man of he, sorts. He attended uni, university, attended uni, but uh, he struggled to shine. So he decides to become a swimming teacher slash coach. And then he gets this polio-like virus, and that ends his swimming career. He got polio? A polio-like virus. And so he got sort of sat down for about eight to nine months. And that, that's like, the one that kind of puts you in a wheelchair, isn't it? And yeah. Polio, so yeah. He couldn't train and stuff. My, my grandmother's identical twin had the polios back in the day. Love and it. so, I mean, it was like two identical twins, healthy. And then in their teenage years, the one got polio. And so it was kind of odd to see the... The, the line that the one with the polio had, because she became somewhat deformed and crippled and hunched over and wheelchair bound. Yeah. Where my grandmother's still like rocking and rolling at 88 years old still today. What, driving, cleaning out her gutters and everything else. That polio, I mean. That'll, that'll put a damper on your day, huh? Yeah, and she, I think she also <laughs> died in like her late 50s. So, yeah, it was, I didn't know that that was grandma's twin. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's a. That's Different a, looking, I mean, the polios. That's a case study. Polio-like disease. Polio-like How, like disease. Did he recover? Yes. Oh, he did fully? Recover. Uh, you know, uh, enough, I would say. He seems to have full mobility from everything I've seen. 
And, uh, you can probably use that as an excuse, though. Like, honey, I can't rake the urn today. I had a polio-like yeah, disease. I had sort of polio-like virus. 1952, he's 22 years old. Rolf moves to London, England. He's a student at City and Guilds of London Art School. So he's there for the arts. Yeah, his parents uh, came from Wales originally to Australia, and so they always told him that uh, London is the center of, like, the hub of the universe, as he put it. Okay. So he was always taught that, and he's like, I gotta go there. All right. So 1953, Rolf gets a job at the BBC. He's oh, we've heard the BBC. British Broadcasting Corporation? Yeah. Okay. He gets a regular 10-minute spot drawing cartoons on a kid's show called Jigsaw. That's a fun movie. Yeah. Now, if you have a thing called Jigsaw, you run in terror because it's <laughs> going to cost you your hand or you're going to have to kill someone to get out of there. This is It ain't a problem killing people as long as the right people get killed. That's true. All right, what else we got here? Rolf had a puppet called Fuzz. And a puppet? Yeah, well, a little hand puppet. Some dude would do a puppet, and that was his thing. Like, hey, okay. Fuzz, we're going to draw some cartoons today. Like, you know, picture pages or, mm-hmm. you know, Bill Cosby's doing picture stuff like pages, that. Picture pages, picture pages. Time to draw the picture pages. He works on a show called... And then n- n- your pencil. Works on a show picture called Paper pages, Magic. Picture pages, time to go in the picture pages. And then n- 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 Bill Cosby in with you. Right? Uh, yeah. Right. I mean, that's the one, right? Yeah. I'm going to bring my guitar next time. He's a regular on a show called, kid's show called Whirly Gig. Whirly Gig? And These sound very British names. <laughs> These are very British names for TV shows. Whirly Gig Children is on. Please watch. <laughs> and the, the yes, sad thing is, is they were probably very popular, and so we just stole them here in America and then made them huge. Oh, here's the it's thing, It's probably man. the precursor to, like, Sesame Street in the Muppet Show. <laughs> no, I, I, I guess I failed to get this across. This is, like, the beginning of commercial TV in England. Like, dude was on the the second channel after the first one was put, what, like, the what British channel government you on? owned it. The other one. <laughs> right. He was actually on both. He was on, he he was on, he was on one. Yep. No, one. <laughs> yeah, the one. No, just the one, guys. That's all we have. We no. never had channel one. There was no channel one. Well, that's what BBC is. you got to remember, that's British Broadcasting Corporation or company or whatever. That's the government. They run that channel. And that's so like he, our PBS, right? Right. Yeah. He, but, it, I mean, it grew much bigger. He was on another one, too, doing a show like this Paper Magic show was on the first other channel called like ivt or something and, like and that. what was the year here this uh, ish we're back in 52 53 okay so that's like right when tv went commercial in england and and, and, and everybody's like recovering from the war still sort right. of kind of and blah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah okay so now with all this tv work it literally new we we're just talking about that rolf starts slacking in art school he's like uh, i don't know i got a job making money over here man <laughs> tv's kind of neat man they're like what the hell's tv what are you talking about tv yeah, it's an art. No, well, TV's not an art. TV. Video games are not art. Go go get a newspaper job. 1956, Rolf gets a movie role. He's in Jim Whittington and his sea lion. No? You don't recognize that one? No. All right, The Adventures of Jim Whittington. All right. Rolf plays the Demon King. Again, we probably took it and turned it into Flipper. <laughs> flipper, Flipper, faster than... Uh, and then he meets his hero. While he's like in between doing movies and stuff, this Austrian, uh, this Australian impressionist painter guy, Hayward Veal. Hayward Veal. You had a painter you liked. I don't remember the Kincaid. Yeah, you did say Kincaid. I have a print of a Kincaid that I stole from my dad. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, Tom. He, <laughs> my grandmother died. And he want. He's like, you know, cleaning their grandma's house out, and there were some like heirloomy things at dressers and whatever. Oh God, he vulture. And so here's my dad, who's a junk collector to the extreme he's like i want you to take a take something of your grandmother's to remember your grandma here's you know we have some things here in the room pick something out and i'm like dad i don't want anything i you know i, I got how i had my like first house or something and and i'm i'm, I'm like i don't well what about that nightstand i'm like i don't want that nightstand whatever um and then i'm oh hey that picture right there i didn't even care about the picture but the border around the picture the not frame. the frame oh. not the frame but the like there was a like a border you know, the picture border frame it was the same color as I just painted a room. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that, 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 I'll take that picture. And, and then my dad, oh, yeah, that's pretty. That's worth a lot of money. <laughs> Why is it sitting in the barn? No, it was it was in the front room. It was on my, oh. my grandma's wall. <laughs> I'm some. sure she got, she was up one night, and it was oh. like a, 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 a QVC, QVC pur- purchase. Yeah. yeah, and I still got it. That's funny. I took it down to hang up a TV, but... <laughs> Pri- priorities. Uh, it's somewhere. Your TV, you just take a picture, now it's that piece of art. You got them mm. all. So, uh, Hayward becomes 
Rolf's mentor. Did we get that part? And so, well, you said it was his hero. Yeah. Well, he's like, a, I guess he's a famous impressionist painter. I couldn't tell you a famous impressionist painter. Anyway. Um, I mean, I'm not that good yeah. at painters. Uh, you want me to paint your picture? I'll paint your picture. Paint I love to paint your picture. picture. At the same time, Rolf is playing his accordion every night down at the Down Under Club. Ooh, an accordion. It's a popular London bar for Aussies and Kiwis to go kind of like have a taste of home. I like an accordion. Yeah, he played the button accordion, or no, the piano accordion, they said, not the button. Weird Al Yankovic. He liked to play the accordion. He did He did that because his mom, actually, there's a traveling salesman who happened to have an accordion, and he was selling lessons, and so that's why. And he was like, I wanted to play the guitar, but... <laughs> it worked out. And so March 1st, 1958, Rolf marries sculptress and jewelry designer Elwin Hunes. Is she hot? I had no pictures. I, they were both art students, so I assume, yeah, yeah she's yeah, a hot, hot art they, student. They brushed elbows in school. They had a dog as a bridesmaid at their wedding. That's very cool. How's I mean, that, well, how's that make your friends feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, getting a dog, you're, it, it's a lot. It's like it's like I can't pick my I can't I don't want to pick my best man or my maid of honor because yes. I'm, I'm I'm gonna offend somebody always. So how about my dog? <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> can't argue with that logic. 1959, Perth, Australia gets television. Oh, wow, they didn't have TV the entire time. <laughs> Rolf decides to return home. He stars and produces in, like, some half-hour weekly kid shows. He's got his own late-night variety show. He's got, like, a, you know, like a six-year jump on Australia on TV. He's yeah. like, I've been doing this since the beginning. He's, he's, yeah, he's like the godfather of Perth television. Listen to me. During this time, Rolf records a song, and this is where you might recognize it. Timey kangaroo down, sport, timey kangaroo down. No. Timey kangaroo down, sport. Is this timey kangaroo down? It sounds like a. It sounds like a song from Sublime or something. <laughs> it's he did lift it from a calypso sort of beat, but that was his big song. It's called Timey Kangaroo Down Sport, and he uh, did it with just a single mic over his head and recorded it at one of the TV studios, and it went out, and people were just like, "Oh my God, that's amazing!" It went viral. It did. The backup band and the guys were offered royalties to help him out. They're like, dude, you can get like ten cents uh, on the song's royalties, or I can just give you a flat fee, like thirty-five bucks. And they all took the thirty-five <laughs> bucks. They're like, this ain't going anywhere. And then, and then, uh, right? Uh, Rolf invents and he plays a thing called the wobble board on this song. That's like the whole point of the thing is he takes his big piece of sheet good and he flaps it up and down, making a whoop a whoop a whoop a whoop sound. Like what is it? So like let's a see if like I can a do it. That's not coming through, is it? No, it's no. so you take like a piece of uh, a sheet, a piece of sheet metal or a thin board, real thin, and you just kind of like whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. Brian's now grabbing random, random pieces of wood in the art in the studio here, and wiggling them around. This is why we need to be on video, man, because that looked really dumb. I bet it'd play well. Yeah, yeah, I think everybody knows. You take like a oh, that's a, a that's a, a, a piece of tin and you have, okay. That's a note card. That's but he plays these big, huge wobble boards. And he's like wobble, wobble, timey kangaroo down sport, and he just like goes <laughs> wobbling these boards. He ma- he makes a noise with a with <laughs> a piece like, of lumber. They're like, oh my god, that's a brilliance! That's brilliance! <laughs> I call this a tin Genius. can. Genius! You, you know what sound better? Cowbell, Brian. Oh like, god, no, cowbell? no cowbell! Leave the cowbell alone. All right. I'll be right back. So, all right, four weeks after its release, hits number one. On what? In Australia and the UK. The this is m- not a kid song? The music charts, no. Oh, I also think it was like some kid song, you know? Like, I mean, it like is. Like the beginning of a Barney not. song or something. Baby shark doo doo. Oh my God, I'm going to punch you. I swear to God. <laughs> I hated that song. Let me explain to you. The minute I ever heard the first noise of that song. And I don't even want to hate it because I don't want ha- that song to have an effect on me. But it, I can't help it. It just does. It has an effect on me. I don't like it. That's one of those songs I think they've literally analyzed, like, the wave pattern, and they knew it was going to be contagious like that. They knew they had, like, the phrasing and the tempo all in this a is, thing for the human brain. This so. is the decline of Western civilization. <laughs> it, it peaked with Baby Shark. So, all right. Here's the thing. And um, if aliens ever come down and they <clears throat> have to decide who they're going to let live... And who they, they got to like, you know, Thanos this planet. <laughs> Anybody that ever sang Baby Shark should die. You're gonna die. I'm gonna die, die just, now. Thank I have you. not sung that song. You just killed me. I don't. Yeah, you're dead, Thanos. That's how we're gonna do it. Thanos. Oh anybody God. that sung Baby Shark, kill him. 
I, that's the it's gonna be on. sad. But after it's done, and we're all take a deep breath, and we're gonna be done with that song. Inhale my dust. And we're gonna have less less people to compete. Yes. I got dusted. Yeah. He's not bad in his theory. I mean, if you do eliminate half the consumers, then you know. Anyway. Then what? Well, then, then we got less consumers. There's more resources for the rest of us. Well, I have plenty of resources right now. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a fat pile of goo over here in this chair. Living good, buddy. Yeah. Living good. All right. Here's the problem, though. You are correct. That is the baby shark of its day. Timey kangaroo down sport. And uh, there's a fourth verse controversy. <laughs> of course. <The> first... <laughs> of course there is. There's a couple of verses they go through. It's like this guy. It's like, oh, it's the whole thing. I should have printed the lyrics. It's like. He come upon a man, a farmer lying in his field, and his mates come up to him, and the farmer says, Mates, I'm not going to make it, and before I go, I need you to do these things. And he's like, timey kangaroo down, sport, timey kangaroo down. It's like, uh, cage my toucans, and to cage my toucans, and stuff like that, you know, like, take care of my donkeys. And so like, this guy's he goes da- this dying, and, and he's, tell, like, he's telling us. wrap up my farm, basically. He's like, wrap up my farm. As he's dying, like, it's getting more and more like, oh, he's not going to make it. And so the fourth verse, though. If I don't, <clears throat> now, here's I'm going, the like, so if, <sighs> I got, I got something you got to do for me if I don't make it. <laughs> Go into my house, the top of the fridge, there is a telephone bill. If I don't make it, don't pay it. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old, that's an old new heart reference. <laughs> I see. Should have just left it go. I would have been like, what? <laughs> All right, here's the fourth verse because I have a copy of it because internet, woo. <clears throat> and I'm going to amend the racial slur that's in there. Oh, there's a racial slur? Yes. What do you mean you got to amend it? I can't, I don't, I'm not offending the good people well, of Australia. We have a couple of Australian listeners now and I don't want to. Is this about the Shh, oh, you can't say that word. What are you doing? What? No, that's a racial slur. They they got, yeah, they're... they're okay, hold on. Let me get through the verse, and then you can tell me your story. No, I don't... The, I'm you're not, the, one, you're no. the one who taught me this. No, I... Uh, no, here, okay, oh, wait, go here ahead. We go, here we go. go ahead. <clears throat> let me aboriginals go loose, Lou. Let me aboriginals go loose. They're of no further use, Lou. So let me aboriginals go loose. And see, that's that got him into trouble. And in later, it's removed in later versions of the song. And Rolf will like express regret about it from the original lyrics. Well, He's like, it was a, a it more like innocent a good thing. time, you know, stuff like well, that. Well, it sounds like the guy was a slaveholder. <laughs> I mean, right? He was trying but, to free his slaves. But like, on, his de- on his deathbed, he's like, hey, let those, all right. Let him go, Lou. I, yeah, um, that's wrong. Stop it. My question Stop. is, do you think Lou, like, <laughs> took the message out and said, hey, guys, you're free? Or Lou was like, he said you're working for me now. <laughs> Why was that part of the controversy? No, I was just thinking it's like one of those things where like <clears throat> the deaf guy steals the the bank money or something, and the interpreter's like, he said, "You go screw yourself," and then the interpreter goes and gets the money. You know, like one of those. Yeah, things no, like a, uh, like we, a double we can we can fight over a fictional song all day long. <laughs> no, but the Australian, uh, the continent slash country yes. of the Australia, um, the Aborigines are the native folks. I mean, they're the people that have been there since the creation of the freaking continent. Right. As was, like, kind of our Native Americans, our, our quote-unquote Indians. Right. Um, and been there's careful. been a lot of problems. I mean, they, they had a lot of similarities in clearing out some of the, uh, you know, the, 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 this is, didn't they make a movie about this with a bunch of blue people? <laughs> Uh, the Blue Man Group. Yeah, the Blue Man Group. That was the movie. <laughs> I don't that was know if it. They're from no. Australia or no, not. No, no. The um, and 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 so when I went over there, they they have they kind of they discriminate a little bit. Not everybody. I'm just saying they look at them like I think a lot of people here in America might look at some different ethnic groups. They're the we don't have you. I I can't tell you the last time I saw somebody that was a native Aboriginal person here in in the United States. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've never, I don't believe I've met. No. I talked to quite a few when I was over there. In Aboriginal Man, Australian. They're, they're people. They're, so. they're hey, people. if you're out there, guys, hit us up on uh, the Instagrams and the Facebooks and Twitters. But there's some, there's some, there's some people in Australia who are dicks, too, and they're dicks <laughs> to the Aborigines. I bought a didgeridoo. Oh, yeah? We, we yeah. didn't get to, we'll get to, we'll get there. Hold on to that thought. We'll get to okay. didgeridoo. All so right. right now, didgeridon't, but we'll, we'll get there in a minute. And it's because I said didgeridon't, we're going to take a little uh, break, and when we come back... More on Rolf Harris. I think we did this one already, didn't we? We heard this bumper music we one did. time. You started going, ooh. Yeah, I did. I sung. 
That was super off key. I apologize. <laughs> if I was on key, it wouldn't be me. You've been listening to Tales of Music Superstars, but at the Intrigue Escape Games in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, you live the rock star adventure. The Save the Concert Escape Room at Intrigue Escape Games is Michigan's first rock star themed escape room. You and your friends have 60 minutes to be the heroes, live the adventure, and save the concert. Book your game now at IntrigueEscapeGames.com. IntrigueEscapeGames.com. back again that bumper music sounds a lot different than the outro Bump. yeah yeah it oh, sounds yeah. yeah this this it's good i like them both you make these i do yeah i make these. you like this jam that's you on the bass guitar right that's me on the bass me on the keys me on the drums you should start singing like a a, a, a barbershop quartet was only you like that billy joel song oh just do it all for longest takes. time oh for the longest time time well, I appreciate that, and uh, maybe one day I'll put some stuff up on uh, the, I don't know, the Instagrams or the YouTubes, and you people can mix, mix around with my music and put your own lyrics to it and see what it's like. That'd be funny to have somebody submit, like, a little bumper music that was, it was decent, whatever. Oh, submit your bumper music, Pop guys, crimeandmusic at gmail.com, or send it to us on any of the yeah, social media. 100% credit. Any of that stuff, absolutely. All right, we're back. We're talking about Rolf Harris down in Australia, playing his wobbly board, and, uh, He's doing good. Things are great. He's touring around. He's so got far for a, shows. for a crime in music, this guy's pretty vanilla. Yeah, <laughs> seems to be, doesn't seems he? Seems to be pretty vanilla. Seems to be pretty good. 1960. Uh, here's another good one. He's on a tour of Australia, sponsored by Dulux Paint. <laughs> Rolf would uh, sing his song, doing his, you know, and he'd do these huge paintings on stage. Like he's had these huge canvases. Like live painting. Yep. Like while he's singing his song, like time you can't get rude down. He's out there swinging paint around. The and then at the end, he flips like it over, and it's Jesus. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because that does. So that's kind of happened. Hey, so, at tangent. Now this is this was awesome. I saw this on on the on the socials the other day. It was on that um, America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent, Somebody's Got Talent show where they got like Howard People, Stern and and who's that who's that one jerk guy that everybody Simon loves Cowell. Simon Cowell we used to call it open call you just go have a casting call and have to try and Yeah, well they had this this no, lady no, this there. this lady and and it and she had like it was basically like a a, a board like a desk was it, it a wobble lit. board? No, it was lit up from underneath and she had sand on top of it. Oh. And she like pushed the sand around with her fingers a as music artist. as music was playing. Yeah, yeah. And it was incredible. She was like drawing moving pictures. Not they weren't moving, but she was moving the sand around. Oh. Incredible. I mean, s- s- in real time and as this music's going telling a story about I I, I might cry a little bit. Wow. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Now see, this is the thing. Okay, that's what Rolf was doing. He would go through his songs and he'd be painting these things like you say and people are like, "Ah," and he's got this sweet catchphrase and it is it, uh, this is Rolf's catchphrase. Can you tell what it is yet? And you don't, you can't until like that last, <laughs> right? And so he would he would go through and then flip it like ninety degrees, like you're saying, and like, oh, it's uh, the boat. I don't know. <laughs> like, all right, it's a boat. So nineteen. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> is it a boat? <laughs> What's it, it, it? It is a boat. What's it feel like? <laughs> Nineteen sixty-two. Uh, Rolf and his wife moved back to England. Oh yeah, they came to Perth. Right, got oh, got yeah. set up on the first TV. Went, went so back to England. Now they're back to England. Rolf meets this guy, George Martin. Do you know who George Martin is? Did he make a guitar? Uh, no. Excellent guess. That never even occurred to me. I'll give you points for that. No, I'm not going to. All right, I won't beat you up on this one. George Martin is a music producer. He's produced over 30 number one hits. He is best known as the fifth Beatle for his extensive involvement with the original Beatles records. I thought I was the fifth Beatle. Y- you can be the fifth Beatle. Okay. George Martin. Ford Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, George Martin's a good guy to know, right, if you want to be into music and stuff. And sure. Tying kangaroos down. Well, 1963, George and Rolf re-record all of Rolf's songs, including Time a Kangaroo Down, Sport, and that becomes a huge hit in the U.S., and guess who sings backup vocals on Time a Kangaroo Down and the re-records? What, what year? 
1963, being produced by the Fifth Beetle. Ringo and George and John. Yeah, they all do. Ben, Bing, the Beatles sing backing vocals on "Timey Kangaroo Down." So if you ever hear it, and I, I went through and I listened to it again, and you have to get the 1963 version, and you're really? like, oh, shit, that's well, the I'm Beatles, not... dude. You're like, you can hear them because their harmonies are all sweet. And we can't like, play the song here, Kevin. No, Ow. I can't. I, I went to the trouble of learning parts of it on the ukulele, and I'm like, I'm not even going to go that far. Well, you would need to hear the actual, so, like, to right. get that taste, because now I'm thinking, I've definitely heard this song. All right, and now here we are to this part. Is uh, They had that song, Timey Kangaroo Downs, re-recorded, but he does another song called Sun Arises. Or Sun Arise, I'm sorry. Sun Arise. And that's like uh, an Aboriginal-style song, and they use didgeridoos. Yeah, those watching somebody play that with that circular breathing, for real, I mean... What's a didgeridoo, Ben? A tube. Yeah, basically, we made them out of PVC tubes. Yeah, they're just a tube. <laughs> kind of melted a little bit. I mean, bit it, was a, it was like a... A tree that when they grew, they were a tube. They cut them, then they blow in them. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> That's my didgeridoo right there. Yeah, they're they're neat. Uh, but yeah, it's a long uh, wooden tube that's hollow, and you kind of blow in it, and uh, it makes a crazy weird different wing. different lengths, different sizes. They'd always paint them, paint them like kind of cool looking and stuff. Yeah. Not that I practiced because I knew that was coming. And now we come up to what we started with, Jake the Peg. Jake the Peg. Yes, Rolf creates a wildly popular character called Jake the Peg, and he's called Jake the Peg because he has three legs. And so uh, Rolf would walk around is on this stage. Is a dick joke? Like, I don't know. I think it is a subtle English dick joke because he he'd come out with three legs, all pant and shoes and everything. He's like, oh, I am Jake the Peg, and oh, I've got a third leg. Like, I, <laughs> it's so wonderful to do. I can appreciate. How I find another shoe? And Bad like, English. I am Jake the English peg. humor. And it's just, he's just strutting around like doing the triple walk, you know, like one I foot am... in front. And, I am, J-, and everybody's just dying laughing, and you're like, oh my god, and he does it really well. So and where so, where does he do this primarily at? Uh, this is primarily in England. England, okay. Yeah, this is very British, hum- very British humor. <clears throat> That's very humorous, like a man in ladies' underwear. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he also has another song in 1969. Rolf re-records a version of a 1902 American Civil War song, Two Little Boys," and it's just like his little song, Two Little Boys." Did Michael Jackson sing, sing back up in this song? Ooh, oh, dude, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> It's funny. Uh, Christmas, that's number one Christmas uh, song in the UK for six weeks, and he sold a million copies and was awarded a Golden Disc Award for this Two Little Boys song. Hmm. It's a neat, if you look up the old 1902 version, it's like uh, Ian Ted or something like that, and it's like really interesting to hear that uh, it was like a recount of Two Little Boys watching the Civil War. So uh, through the 70s and 80s, he had some success on the BBC again with shows like Rolf cartoon, uh, Rolf's Cartoon Time, Rolf's Cartoon Club, and then he had a night show called Rolf on Saturday, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, uh, not okay. He always ended up uh, painting on these huge boards, and he'd be like, can you tell what it is yet? I I feel like if I saw this, <laughs> a little bit of this, maybe maybe we've seen a little bit of it somewhere? I, I think a teeny bit, honestly. <clears throat> he's got a weird look to him. Um, like now, obviously, he's a, a, an older sort of English-looking fellow, but he's got a weird mustache where it looks like his mustache like shoots right out of his nose. Like it's lined right up with his nostrils on both sides, and he shaves everything else. Hmm. He's he's kind of a Captain Kangaroo type of character, kind of. You know, okay. like that's kind of the Australian Captain right. Kangaroo. I'm I'm, I'm just going to remind the audience that this is crime and music. Actually, I'm kind of reminding Brian right now. Uh, no, I, I I understand that, but uh, <laughs> trust me, we'll we'll get there. 1971, Rolf's on. This is your life. Okay. okay. <laughs> 1973. Like, way to make everything confrontational. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, here's some dinner. Okay? <laughs> okay. Easy, Rolf. Okay? <laughs> that is a good way to just like turn any <laughs> phrase into like a fight. Into an argument. Yeah, I'm gonna hey, do I'm gonna try this at home with hey, my how wife. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Okay. <clears throat> hey, what do you want for dinner? Hot dogs? Hot dogs okay? <laughs> Hot dogs, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Hot th- no, they're okay, I'm telling you. 
1973, Rolf performs the first concert ever at the newly completed Sydney Opera House. Wow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying he to... was in. He was the first one to play in that thing. <laughs> I am Jake the Pig. Hey, are you serious? <laughs> I've got a third leg. The most, the most iconic opera house yes. in the world. Yes. And he's got his wobbly board going. This jerk off place for first <laughs> concert. <laughs> they couldn't get like <laughs> Celine Dion. I mean, so. Night, well, speaking of Celine Dion, uh, you won't recognize this, I'm sure, because I know you, but uh, we'll try. 1982, Rolf plays the didgeridoo. On an English pop singer, Kate Bush's album, The Dreaming. Kate Bush. Kate Bush. Yeah, no. Okay. Huh. 1985, Rolf does a 20-minute child abuse prevention video called Kids Can Say No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, just remember, Ross did a 20-minute child abuse prevention video. Yeah, this guy sounds like a... Almost too good to be true, Brian. <laughs> Perhaps it is. In the late 80s, Rolf is touring Australia with the TV show uh, The Money and the Gun, and they ask him to sing a version of Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. Mm-hmm. Zeppelin was like, give it a crack, man. And so he does. It gets picked up by the UK charts, ranks number seven. Leads him to a spot at the Glastonbury Festival in 1993, 98, 2000, 2002, 2009, 2010, 2013. So people like this dude, man. Okay, like, yeah. I'm trying to build like this huge pyramid here, and and it's it's doing good so far. Here we go, 1994, basically to 2004. I'm gonna sum up a decade. Rolf hosts a reality show called Animal Hospital. It's about a veterinary clinic, and they like the rescue workers and vets help abandoned animals and mm-hmm. they get things mm-hmm. adopted. Blah blah blah. Rolf is uh, commissioned to paint a portrait of Queen Elizabeth II for her 80th birthday. Jesus, this guy's on top. <laughs> December 9th, 2005, there's an unveiling. It's later voted the second most favorite picture of the Queen by the English public. How did the English public pick the Queen's second favorite picture? <laughs> no, the f- second favorite picture of the Queen by the English public. They're like, oh, oh. we like this one. <laughs> They're like, second. no, no, mom, mom. No, mom. That's your second <laughs> favorite picture. You like this one better. This is one you like. That one's your first. This is your second. That's your third. He Rolf gets, did that one. He gets, like, these awards of, like... It's a boat. He, he wasn't, like, knighted, but he got some super award, like, defender of the whatever, I don't know, some artist commonwealth thing. They didn't knight him? I thought they knighted people, like, drop of a hat. No, no, no. It's getting a little bit better. So, in uh, 2012, Rolf gets a BAFTA fellowship, which is the highest honor in British entertainment. Like This hey, is, man, like, 2012? It was, like, 2012. You're just waiting for the shoe, aren't you? The shoe's dangling on the toe. It's slipping down. It's almost on the big toe alone. October 2012, Operation U-Tree, led by Metropolitan Police Service, investigates allegations of sexual abuse, in particular, the abuse of children. Did Chris Hansen have anything involved with this? <laughs> this is the British Chris Hansen. Yeah, this is Christian Hansenson. Come over here and sit down, would you? My name's Chris Hansen. <laughs> hey, why, I, but I was supposed to meet a teenager up in their bedroom, though. Why do why? you got a six-pack of wine coolers? <laughs> why are you in these people's kitchen? And a handful of condoms. There's a guy with a boom mic. Hey, so there, this is a bad story. <laughs> uh, we're just, about to take a this turn just, anyway, this my man. just happened. So this uh, pastor up north of this little church up by. <clears throat> now, just just careful. That's yeah. Okay. No, I'm the, no names. Okay. No names. I don't say. know his name. All right. But this dude was like a pastor of a church of some kind, whatever. And he involved himself with helping, like, homeless people, indigents. I mean. Oh, you know, whatever, helping. That's that what sounds good. A lot of good people do this. That sounds and really good. And he was trying to be one of them. And allegedly, I don't think he's been po- prosecuted yet. But Excellent word. He would get these homeless dudes, give them meth. Oh, God. So, okay. So, first of all, he's just giving these homeless dudes some meth. Got a methed up homeless dude. And then he laces their meth. <laughs> Why? Why? With the GHB, the date rape, GHB or roofies or whatever. What? So I don't even know how you do that. I'm not even really sure what meth looks like or GHB, so uh, I don't know if he's like crushing them together in a little to, mortar like, and pestle. Their heart explode? Or what's well, your goal? No, to have them pass out and then anally rape them. But what's with the meth? Oh, well, that's the bait. That's the bait. That's the bait. Like, hey, you oh. know a little meth? Trust me, I got some meth. I'm Man. trustworthy. So he meth, he, he got he's, them all methed up. He's meth roofing people. Yeah, and and. And then he would take them back to the shelter and then say, if you tell anybody, I'll kill you. And these poor people who may or may not have mental issues. Who am I going to tell? Yeah, well, one guy finally came forward and was like, yeah, and he went and got checked out. And in the article, they, in the article, on in the newspaper, oh, no. they 
<laughs> they said he had anal trauma. Oh, no. <laughs> That's... Oh. I can't believe... I, mean, I could see them, like, maybe sugarcoating that term a little bit, saying no. there were signs of rapings. No, no the bum was ass raped. The That's just... A- <laughs> anal trauma. The hobo got butt railed. That's, that's, thanks, guys. Thanks uh, for outing uh, me. All right, let's hear about the. Let's hear about Jake the Peg. Homeless man Carl Ewins. Oh, that was guy. Uh, butt raped by force. <laughs> what? Why are you putting my name in? <laughs> <laughs> Occupant of the corner. When I told you my name, I didn't know you were going to put it in the paper and then put off the record. immediately after <laughs> anal trauma. Off the record, I said. Oh uh, my God! Why anal trauma? Anyway, all right. Uh, yeah. Jake, who'd have thought Jake the Peg would be uh, suspected under Operation U-Tree? Uh, so anyway, here's the thing. They got reports that said um, this Operation U-Tree was looking at 1,400 persons, and uh, 261 were of high profile. So what had happened was, um, this is the straight-up Cliff Notes version. I'm going to gloss over a lot. But there was a British DJ and TV personality named Jimmy Seville. He died. There was a special report that came up out after he died with allegations. I don't know if that sounds anything close to what's happened recently in the media. But other people were also like, oh, he wasn't that great. He sexually assaulted me. And then other people, it just sort of steamrolled. And then they gathered all those files. The British police were like, that's a lot of the people saying the same thing over and over again about this guy and this guy and this guy and these people. And so... They started building a list of historically accused sex offenders, and that's the Operation U-Tree sets in motion uh, an investigation, and Rolf makes the list. So he's he's being investigated as a as a criminal. Yes. Not as a not as a. a, a... No, he is one of the fourteen hundred criminals. Well, he's one of the two hundred sixty one high profile criminals it's, in is this Operation like a, U-Tree. A, like that... a, se- a sex ring. I it wasn't really a was it a, a kitty ring, sex ring? But it wasn't really a kitty sex ring. It was more like all of these guys are they're creepers, and everyone's like, "Yeah, they're creepers. Let's look into it." What were they doing? Was so, this like they're just I mean oh, Hollywood a- stuff where you hey you want the part. Yeah, allegations. Take your, take your boobs out. Allegations or... and stuff. No, most of it was child stuff. Oh, like, okay. Most of it was like... You know how much I love that? Thanks, Brian. <laughs> that, that's why. That's, I, yeah, I picked can... a guy you never heard of, Ben. That's why I did this one well, this I don't way. even okay. like talking about it. But, well, yeah. I, I skipped the big forms where it's like, what were the allegations? If you want to know, I can tell you. Dude, this guy in Texas beat the fuck out this other guy yep. and killed him. Yeah. Oh, that guy did die, didn't he? He killed him? He, that guy they... died in custody, right? Well, I... No, the, no, no, no. Some, so oh, some, we heard some two different things. Some okay. little, um, like young girl. I'm talking like before ten. I'm, you know, like a five year old. Oh, got like sexually done with with some dude. Right. Well, the little girl's father finds out about it. Killed the guy. Beat him up. Beat him until he was dead. Wow. So the the, the father goes to the, you know, gets arrested. Whatever goes to the the judge and the jury, and they're like, no, nope, you're fine. Those wow. are the stories I want to hear. That's those are the, the stories wow. I want to hear. I mean, I don't want to hear about the poor little girl that got, no. you know, but that's, that's Texas justice. That crime of passion law. Like, uh, no, crime of passion. Seems reasonable. No, yeah, no. no. I thought you it happens gonna... again. Continue. I mean, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I thought you were going to tell me this story. This 19-year-old man, I guess, um, comes home and he sees this 15-year-old kid <clears throat> with, like, his 5-year-old brother's dick in his mouth and he beat the fuck out of the 15 year old he's like what the fuck are you doing and uh i'm i'm blurring some facts but because the guy's 19 he's being charged with like assault of a minor and all this stuff and so it's just like what the hell no that was and he videotaped him kicking his ass too (laughs) like he instagrammed it while he was doing it it's like that's what you fucking the world the world today so anyway Uh, yeah wow uh, terrible stuff so november 24th 2000 uh, let me just I'll just put it up there. Rolf is going to get some child porn images that he's going to get uh, sort of credited with. And then uh, the nicest way I can sum it up is Rolf was kind of a fan of the reach around, reach under kind of maneuver when people would come in to hug him and stuff or when people would go for <laughs> autographs. He would either go down the front and up and then or around the back and, and up and under. So Rolf's property is searched. Uh, November 29th, Rolf is interviewed. March 28, 2013, Rolf is arrested and quizzed. What's, <laughs> that the, must, what's <laughs> the capital of Wyoming? 
Uh, okay. Casper? Uh, Is it Casper? No, I don't think so. Uh, he's quizzed, but uh, I guess he did all right because the police, he didn't charge him. So May 2nd, the British cops are now interviewing Australian witnesses that have come forward. So they're taking this international now. August 5th, uh, Rolf is rearrested and uh, he's bailed out on further allegations of historic sexual abuse. So, I mean, they're just charges are flying at him. August 29th, Rolf is charged with nine counts of indecently <clears throat> assaulting uh, two girls aged 14 and 15 in the 1980s and four counts of making indecent photos of a child. Yeah, no, that's a bad, that's a bad rabbit hole to go down well i mean just some people thought like he's a celebrity and people were piling on and other people I were like that. yeah but we got to protect the kids that actually were assaulted it's a hard so. it's a hard it's a hard thing to navigate i mean there's a lot of that going on right now in today's society i'm going to bring the, the joe biden stuff right and he's got all these pictures that are just snapshots of time of him looking very creepy right but the guy's been in the in the public eye for a billion years because he's like a billion years old yes and and it was different in the 70s when you would there were more affectionate ways to show your say hello at different times in our hist our, our brief history you know short history uh, oh yeah yeah recent history and right. today you don't just go up and give another coworker a big huge hug no. when there's a bunch of cameras around you give them a nice business like handshake you know hand on the top hand on the bottom hand know, sandwich hand the hand sandwich <laughs> and and you don't you, and and Joe Biden's getting drugged through it he may be a creeper i don't know but i also think he's just like that weird creepy uncle who would like give you a hug and he wasn't a bad dude and i didn't want the hug but you're like all right this guy wants a hug there's even some families that like the the, the dads will Kiss on the lips. I don't uh, like to kiss on the lips. Don't kiss on the but lips. But it's not a sex. It's just the, what they, like, my grandmother is a kiss oh. on the lips person. Well, it's a grandmother, I think. I know, something. but I don't want to kiss her on the lips. No, no. Do the lean to the cheek. cheek. Just a quick turn. I don't even like hugging people. <laughs> Jeez. I don't. Well, we're hey. as close right now together as I ever want to be, like, physically. <laughs> this is about our distance. This is it. This is a good distance. Is a Any good, closer? Good ice fishing shanty distance. Yeah, this is, is good. Oh, that's, that's it. So, anyway. Okay. Well, let's... Uh, well, I, what, ha- what, what, do you, what do you finally get run up on? Uh, he uh, Prosecutors say Rolf has to face three more uh, indecent assault charges involving two new allegations, victims one age seven or eight back in 1968. And then May 6, 2014, the trial begins at Southwark Crown Court. I believe that's in England. I hope. And, and I'm, I'm all for the... the the Me Too's, but everyone, if if the shit happens to you, I know we don't probably have a lot of five year olds listening to our podcast. Not but if if, if something happens, get it out there, get it on paper, Put say it, something, say something, see something. Now, say something. don't say something in twenty years. No, I mean, I guess if something happened twenty years ago, well, say something, say something now. now. Say something don't now. wait until they're popular or everybody else is piling on. June thirtieth, Rolf is convicted of twelve indecent assaults. He gets five years and nine months. Oh, oh, he got, he got. That's the, that was the maximum they could give him. They put him in the Huskow. According to the legislation at the time, that's what he got. So. How, how, about how, what, how old? Was he? he was born in the thirty. So. Oh God, he was like in his eighties, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and that's how he got the name Willy Wonka because he came, went in there giving out uh, chocolate bars to all the other inmates to try and win favoritism and stuff, and he would draw them like little pictures and stuff, and then. That sort of started fights. And He's so an they, 80 year old. What are they going to do to him? Hey, I mean, how much Willy street, Wonka, give me some chocolate. How much street cred are you going to get beating up your grandpa? Can you tell what it is yet? What? No, I just imagine oh. people <laughs> say that to him in prison. <laughs> hey, Ralph, can you tell what it is yet? Is it hard? Oh, Lord. Is it long? I, I could not stop laughing when I when I saw that was his catchphrase. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> can you? T- can hey, boy, can, can you tell what it is yet? You, uh, he's British prison. You tell what is it? That's my that's my Mr. T. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> that's hey boy, that's <laughs> that's very 1986 of you. So uh, February 5th, Rolf gets interviewed in jail over more allegations. He's in prison. He's getting talked to. Yep. So February 12th, 2016, Rolf will uh, face further seven indecency charges. December 15th, due to the age and poor health of Rolf, he attends his trial by video link from Stafford Prison. Hmm. I, that's good. I, I, I'm all for the video link. I, we can put, if it's funny, we can put it on YouTube. Rolf's second trial begins on those seven new charges. Rolf is found not guilty of three groping charges, but the jury failed to reach the mandatory on the four other counts. So prosecutors said they're not going to pursue another retrial. They're just like, look, man, he's super old and sickly. It's not going to be that big of a deal. 
<laughs> we're we're not going to send him. We can't. There's only so much time this guy's got to spend. Yeah, right. Here. So. So. All right, we're down to the last couple cards. We're we're, we're, we're we're at where are we at with this dude? May seventeenth, Rolf is released from prison. I'm sorry, May 2017, Rolf is released from prison. Okay. So 1930 to 2017. Let's do our math. There's 70, 87 years old. So he must have went in at about 82. It, no, thir- 70. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He is rarely seen in public. He was spotted outside of a grade school, smiling and waving at kids. Oh, that's bad. You can't do it. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Teachers made him leave and escorted him from the property. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> and uh, I, I will end with the quote like we do. Quote from Ralt Harris. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> this poor. This guy sounds, I mean, I was waiting for it the entire show. Yeah. He sounded so boring. Yeah, that was kind of the point. It was like this whole time. But, I mean, he's got charges starting from like 68, oh, 86, good. Who can resist a good kitty porn podcast? <laughs> No, I don't know. This Not guy I was trying for, man. I just needed an Australian guy. I, I don't think that it, it it may be just a sign of the times that so many of these guys are coming around today. That, that this has happened tons today. So, I mean, it's kind of an interesting story in today's yeah. atmosphere. Right. That, I, I was alluding to the Michael Jackson stuff where he's dead and then all of a sudden right. the Neverland stuff comes out and Corey Feldman's like, hey, he's not a bad guy. Well, okay, I'm not going to say he wasn't. A, he was nice to me, you know, well, like all this stuff. Well, yeah. So. I, can't rape the willing, Corey. Um, no, the, the yeah, the Michael Jackson thing, that was a joke. I'm, you know, okay, so that movie just came out here recently. I have not seen it, I will admit. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I don't need to see it. He's a he's a pedophile. He was a dude that liked to diddle little kids. That's what it kind of That's seems not like. a, we know that. We knew that. Yeah. And we still celebrate the man until a movie comes out to remind us that he's a kid diddler. Well. And we'll hate him for a good month. We'll hate this dude for a month. Don't listen to it. I and then we'll all be back on it like. Watching Michael Jackson do the moonwalk. I mean, there is a old... trend right now of looking back. Like my wife and I are, are, we've gone through all of the mildly entertaining things. I think on like Hulu and Netflix, and so we're on to reruns of Friends. And you're watching this stuff. You're like, oh my god, was... they're like mocking Monica constantly for just being like fat in high school. They're like, oh no, yeah. you don't understand. She was an asshole because she was like a big girl in high school. And was like, geez, man, that's yeah, okay. fat shaming, and that was fine in the in the in the Friends early '90s era, right? So it's it's when you look back and judge with the current perspective. It's hard to do, man. And yeah. I don't know that it's – I don't want to give people excuses, but it's not necessarily <clears throat> fair. You don't – I don't want to say fair. Fair is not the right not word. There's not a stat- statute of, of limitations for some of the things you've done in your past. But I think you need to be judged by your peers, and that is the peers of your day. And yeah, that there day you go. There you go. Was the peers of your day. 40, 30 years ago. That, yeah, wrong, it's wrong. That's I mean, it, sure. But, and there are things right. that we're doing today that are way more wrong than that were done back then. Correct. And vice versa. There's things yeah, there you that go. you could not do back then that you can do today, like wear a hat in church. I don't know, something like that. You know, yeah. like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe like, I did that. Yeah. Or, you know, you know so – this, but diddling kids has always been wrong. That's wrong. It'll That's always, always be wrong. wrong and yeah. It'll stay to be wrong. So yeah, we're going to keep that rule. We've gotten this far. Uh, we do have uh, some feedback. If you want to hear some feedback, I know you like the feedback. Yeah, it makes it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> we got what a speak that pipe. Noise? That was feedback. Oh, we got a speak pipe. We got speak a speak pipe. 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 All right, we're going to let you listen to our speak pipe. This comes from a guy named Stanley, and I'll tell you more about him after Stanley. Speak pipe. No, Stanley. Don't make no. Oh, no, don't make fun of the speak pipe people, Ben. No, no. I thought you meant like Stan Lee. Stan Lee has contacted us from beyond the grave to leave us a speak pipe. <laughs> awesome. That'd be awesome. No, this is a guy named Stanley. Hey, this is Stanley. I love y'all's podcast. Uh, I just think it's pretty funny. Um, actually, on Bad and the Boondocks, we're pretty new. Me and my son, we do a true crime podcast mostly talking about stuff that happens back in the sticks. We live way back in the boondocks, South Carolina. South Carolina. Little tiny town, population less than 500. I was going to mention y'all on my show. I was wondering if y'all would mention me on y'all's show. Uh, Keep up the good work. Like I said, love your podcast. All right. Thank you, Stanley. Hey, thank you, Stanley. What, do, did we find out what his podcast we is? did. His podcast is called Bad in the Boondocks. And he and his son talk about true crime that happens, like he said, way out in the sticks. The one episode I came in on, they were comparing uh, bad women. They were like, oh, okay. Like, he, he'll get a story, and he'll tell his son, and then his son will tell a story. Like, he was telling a story about this woman back in the sticks where she 
like killed some people and then his son came back and he goes okay well this one lady was watching her kids she got all like drugged up on something and then just started biting and eating the toes off her baby and then oh uh, he killed her baby <laughs> they're like what the f-? and so yeah they go back and they're like that's terrible oh my god like in his i mean obviously i love stanley's voice that's the greatest accent well that's, hold on so I, I listen to that so bad in the boondocks guys bad in the boondocks bad in the bad in the bad in the boondocks they got like a little trailer graphic is their thing they're on instagram facebook twitter all of it they got it everywhere you get podcasts but bad in the boondocks check them out if you like crazy true crime from like back in the sticks man as told by those who who live there i want to go i want to go down there and, and if i go down to the carolinas i want to go hook, i'm gonna, at stanley hey you ever go pig hunting down there oh just question dude i want to go pig hunting just question for sure well we'll go we'll go snatch some pigs and barbecue yeah, them been dying to do that we'll co-host some podcasts and since we said that it's time to get the heck out of here it's another every other wednesday i guess and so we'll be back the other wednesday after that <laughs> with another podcast about some crazy people who had some music and you're like what are, what did they do wrong we, brian we will you're just building not, it up we will not be on next wednesday though right we're, just building it we're up. never on next wednesday never next wednesday it's the one after the that. one after next the one after that all right so we'll I see won't... you the wednesday after next in a fortnight i'll see you in a, a fortnight. fortnight a fortnight of wednesdays <laughs> no that's a lot more wednesdays is it that a video game I don't know. I don't. I never heard of video games. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna do the Fortnite dance right now. He is. You gotta floss. No, that's not. It, uh, is that a Fortnite dance Fly, now? And then you gotta do the thing. The Carlton. Carlton that's not let the him. Carlton. That's a no. Carlton one. let him keep that. They they sued, but now they they let him do it's, it. Can you trademark but, a dance? That's a whole other podcast, guys. And uh, let us know what you think. Like the song says, never trust a big button. A smile. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs>